The summer rain covers our faces like a fine gauze as we step down from the carriage. It's a long time since I've been in London, and I've forgotten how loud it is here. Rattling coal wagons, hurtling omnibuses, street sellers advertising their wares with guttural yells on either side of the strand. I stand, a little hesitant, before the entrance of New Somerset House, not wanting to enter until I am ready. Ada, are you feeling quite well? comes a voice from beside me. Yes, I reply, for the sake of brevity. Well then, let us not waste any more time on the pavement, says my mother. A small hand presses between my shoulders, urging me on. Short in stature, quick-footed, utterly formidable. Mama is today in her element as she leads me into the annual exhibition. All the world and his wife seems to be here, don't they? She says, surveying the scrabbling throng on the marble staircase. Fine feathered ladies calling out to each other, gentlemen in coal black top hats, their tailcoats flurrying like raven's wings. We make our way slowly, Mama stepping nimbly into vacant spaces, never letting go of my arm. I am not as strong as I would like to be, and the moment have difficulty walking, much to my irritation. Mama used to despise places like this one. When I was a little girl, we avoided them. She never wanted anyone to notice us, to point, to stare, and to call attention to who we were. And gradually, I came to despise them too. But there's no evidence of that avoidance today on her part. Oh, where have they put it, she mutters as we reach the top of the stairs. A sequence of high ceilinged rooms now open sev out in several directions. The walls are rich, forest-like green. Not that much of them can be seen, for every inch right up to the top is covered in paintings. I am reminded of magnified mosaic or a patchwork kilt of extraordinary variegation. Overwhelming at first glance, but wonderful too. It's a shame, really, that there are so many people. The crush of body ob bodies obscure so much that one might want to see. And the noise, I cannot hear myself think above the bellowing laughter, the shrill screeches of praise and recognition. It is so nice, cries one woman passing us, to see which of one's friends have been immortalised in the exhibition. I am just admiring one of Mr Turner's paintings. It's a view of Venice, a place I have never visited, although I would like to. When Mama comes hurrying over with a programme and beckons me to follow, through the clouds we thread until we reach a room with a domed ceiling on which the rain pounds ominously. It is as though we are in the middle of a huge drum. I still can't see it, Mama says crossly, as though the entire exhibition should really have been planned with her involvement. Very mum of this. She likes to be in control of everything. Oh well, I say. I never liked it anyway. Don't say that, Ada. Mrs Carpenter might be here somewhere. I never liked her much either. Wisely, Mama decides to ignore me. I'm sorry I was rude, there's just something about being with Mama sometimes. Even though I'm a woman of twenty, I still want to behave like a petulant child when I'm with her. Mama cranes her neck upwards to those sorry paintings that have been squashed unceremoniously close to the cornice. I fully expect the painting not to be positioned to be in a position of prominence, she says. Not for example near a doorway or a place too high. It's called being skied, says a kindly growing haired gentleman standing nearby. The painters hate it, especially the well-known ones. Mama turns to him eagerly. Have you seen my daughter's portrait, sir? He studies me curiously, not quite with an eyebrow raised, but with a certain amount of surprise. I have not, I admit, taken any particular care with my clothing today. Why should I? When well, there are more interesting things to think about. Just this morning, for example, I reminded myself of the correct way in which to approach bi-quadratic equations and lost myself complete, quite blissfully in the process, at least for a while. Then I think the gentleman does recognise me, as people tend to do. He's just opening his mouth to speak, when Mama gives a squeal of delight.